I'm sitting down with Blizzard concept artist Luke Mancini. You might know him as Mr. Jack. At least that's how I know him, because I've been staring at your art for a really long time, as it turns out. You've been, if Google is to be believed, you've been uh, making art over at Blizzard since 2010? Yes, uh, I joined the StarCraft team in 2009, late 2009. Oh, that's 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 it's awesome. Just over 10 years now. It looks like you've also worked on the WoW TCG and Heroes of the Storm, as as well as, obviously, Hearthstone. Yeah, so I started out on StarCraft. Yeah, I joined not quite a year before we shipped Wings of Liberty and was there on the Heroes team as that project turned into an actual project, started from a little mod that the StarCraft team was working on and developed all the way into a game and a team on its own. Uh, and yeah, that entire time I was working on the WoW TCG as a freelancer because Blizzard had different levels of control over like the production of that over the years. And then when, um, when that sort of got taken over completely, we started working on Hearthstone and I started working on that internally as well, which was really fun. And that was all on the side while I was still working on StarCraft or Heroes. Oh, so you were like technically a freelancer, even though you were a Blizzard employee working on StarCraft and Heroes? Yes. Oh, yeah. So wow. was the, first, the first few years on the Wild and CG, I was actual freelance. I got paid not by Blizzard. And then once we, once it came internal, we do, it's, yeah, effectively outsourcing internally, um, which is a really fun thing to do. I'm really, really happy that I was able to contribute for so long. I, I, I've heard a lot of uh, a lot of different you know devs and artist stories in my time you know covering Blizzard games and this has to be one of the more unique journeys through through uh, the professional career of, of of working at Blizzard Entertainment. That's that's pretty cool. So I mean I mean it sounds like it, you must be obviously you you, you know you, if you go anywhere if folks listening at home go just Google Mr Jack Art uh, and maybe throw Blizzard in there you're all over the place Deviant Art and, and the like I mean just look taking a quick look at your work like clearly you are versatile you know I'm I'm, I'm curious what it's like you know before getting into the Hearthstone specific stuff I mean you've gone from StarCraft it, you apparently you were you were doing both WoW and StarCraft. Uh, art kind of around the same time with the TCG as well as here's a storm. I mean, what is it like constantly oscillating between science fiction and fantasy art styles is like, do do you even think about it at this point? It's pretty, it's pretty natural. Yeah. I think at this point heroes did a lot to help out with that because it was basically just working on all of Blizzard's IPs while we were doing that. It was a bit of Starcraft and honestly it was sort of nice. Like you, you never got bugged down in one thing for too long. You weren't doing years of the same thing. So when I was on the Starcraft team, initially doing the WoW TCG, WoW TCG, that was really nice because it was Starcraft, uh, sci-fi all day. And then a little bit in the evenings or on weekends, just dabbing my toe in WoW and fantasy stuff. And yeah, so that was always nice. And while I was on the heroes team, that was, that was one of the most fun things about that project, I think was, being able to do a little bit of everything, being able to say, hey, I like Warcraft, I like Diablo, I like mixing these things together and smashing them together. And those were always the most fun, I think, the crossovers and stuff, where we got to do the heroes encountering each other and appearing from other worlds. How did you get your foot in the door at Blizzard? Like, were you always kind of doing fantasy and science fiction? Were you doing some fan art? Oh, yeah, yeah, pretty much. I was, um, I grew up on Blizzard games. I was a Mac. We had a Mac at home. So Blizzard was one of the few companies that actually made games that we could play. So that helped. Uh, So I was a Brood War player in uh, high school. All my friends, we played Brood War at school. We convinced our teachers to let us put Brood War on the science computers we play every lunchtime or most lunch times um and so when sc2 got announced that was that was just blew my mind that trailer blew my mind i mean i said this before i think it's still one of the best specs that wizards done the build a better marine launch trailer for sc2 and i just started doing fan art and i got super devoted into the sc2 community um i joined a, a smallish fan site and just like scoured blizzards updates for um for all sorts of information got their videos and made gifts out of everything and tried to find the little things that may, they may have been hidden in there and all that stuff and so and i was just drawing like zerg stuff especially the initial launch trailer was 
uh, Taryn and Protoss, and then Zerg came out, and I always loved Zerg and um, Brood Wars, so like they, and they slowly were trickling all this info out. So I was just, this isn't quick enough, so I started drawing my own stuff, and eventually that caught the attention of people at Blizzard, and I just kept doing it. I think that was the biggest thing. It wasn't just like, oh, I did this one amazing piece, and I saw it, and then got forgotten. It was just like, keep doing it and keep doing it. I was able to, I was able to visit and go to BlizzCon in 2018. Um, so I got a, a press pass, which was pretty, pretty cushy because I didn't really, um, the, the members of the fan site that I was a part of got the press pass and they were able to bring someone, one of their team. And the other couple of guys from the site were all American already. So they pretty much already booked their BlizzCon tickets. And I was able to just say, say, hey, you live in Australia. It makes a bit more sense for us to use this to get you out here than it does to get one of us from Ohio. Um, so that was pretty amazing. And I got to meet a bunch of the community team um, and a bunch of artists. I got to meet Sammy there, and that was pretty amazing. And just further, uh, further stoked the fires of excitement. BlizzCon, BlizzCon will do that to you for sure. I, I haven't been able to stop going since I first showed up. So. And I, I have to imagine that that type of variety would come in handy with working on Hearthstone. Yes, it's set in Warcraft, but like Hearthstone's version of Warcraft really goes places. Like they, they really kind of take their themes and, and just crank them up to 11. So I'm, did you, again, it's one of those things I'm, I'm kind of curious if you think about it or uh, when you're, when you're in it, like, oh, thank goodness I've, I've drawn uh, dinosaurs, robots, roaches <laughs> bursting out of the ground and also yeah. orcs yeah. fighting or, or is, is it just, does Blizzard have such a kind of, uh, I don't know, like, I guess the art direction, kind of like their aesthetic and their, and their visual language, does it just kind of carry through all the IP? It does. Yeah. To a certain degree. I think Hearthstone is a pretty good example of like a Blizzard of the Blizzard art style. Like it's very, it's, it's wow, but it's even more, a little more over the top and a little bit more, it's got a really strong vibe of its own, I think. And that was a really interesting thing, having gone from working on Hearthstone on the side. So I would do like every set, I'd do maybe two cards and I would just get the style, style guide from the Hearthstone team. And they'd be like, here's all the stuff you're doing. Here's your brief. You're doing this one card for each wave. Um, I'm like, oh, okay, that's cool. And I'd have a bit of an overview of like what the set was and what that style was, but now being on the team and being, um, a part of like how we choose the theme for the set and how, what elements we decide are really important for which set. Um, it's been a really nice, uh, change in seeing like the entire way the product is made rather than just, uh, oh, here, add these of art every now and again. Um, and yeah. Hearthstone does a really good job of grab of finding a key like theme per expansion, and then they really just go to town on that um, in a way that like you can't really do in Warcraft, where you're still there are so many different elements and so many things going on, and so many different ways that you want people to play at any one time. Whereas Hearthstone, you can really focus on like one of my favorite sets was the Knights of the Frozen Throne. And it was like, this is, everything's Death Knights, everything's frosty, everything's crazy. And you could, we just really went to town on, like every card has that flavor. Uh, and it's such a, such a cool thing to see how, how we can take all those recognizable well elements and add that little spin to them. I, I would assume it's nice to not have to worry about like the canonical impact of uh, turning <laughs> all of the heroes in the death Knights is like, well, Goldan's dead twice now and Jaina might, you know, but like, it doesn't matter. Like just have fun with it. It's like a, a really great comic spin off. A lot of these expansions. I really like them. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, that's something that I really, really love. Those two was we have to be, we could choose characters from there. Like, most iconic period and take them from there. And then if we wanted to say like Thrall, we had multiple versions of Thrall from places that were canonical. And then it was like, what happens if he was like, he went fully evil. What happens if he was elemental? Uh, like all these other things that we didn't have to worry about. And I think Hearthstone has a very similar lightheartedness. We don't get to go quite so crazy. I think that's a fun thing too. Like it's, it's nice to know where your boundaries are and just play within those. But that sense of, fun and surprise like taking characters in a completely different direction that a regular wow audience is never going to get is pretty cool 
That's great. Well, you know, we're, we're talking today because uh, the, the you and the Hearthstone team have done something pretty unique that, that we haven't really seen the team do before. You just designed an entire card back from start to finish live on stream. Folks were able, uh, at the time of recording this, it was last week, over the course of basically three days of streaming, you, you did concept work for next month's card back and then brought it all the way to completion. How did that come about? Frankly, I'm just let my uh, opinion out of the bag. I loved it. I thought it was really cool. You know, when I went to my very first BlizzCon, like before I ever had a media pass or had to like, I have to get X amount of interviews and cover it for the shows and stuff. I just went from like art panel to art panel because I was, a, I still am a really big Blizzard art nerd. It was so rad. Like as someone who went to their first BlizzCon and like lived at the art stage, uh, which at that time there was like art panels going almost 24 seven. It was really cool to see you streaming like from your home rig. I'm kind of curious, like, how did that come up? I think it was basically just somebody's idea that, hey, what this is something that people are interested in. This is something that we can do that isn't like super spoilery. Like out of so much of what we do is we don't want to give anything before it comes out because obvious for obvious reasons. Uh, so we can't show this usually the way it is work. We're working on stuff that we can't show for months or years in some cases. But the seasonal card backs are like, this is a perfect example of something that we can actually show our pipeline. And in a way, like, sure, we could just film it beforehand and then edit it and put it up. But honestly, it's a lot less work just to go and do it live. I've done quite a lot of live painting. Like I've live streamed on my own. I've been to big events. Like I've done, I've done the art stage at BlizzCon pretty much every year that they've had it in, from the first year. Which I think was 2010 when we that was the first time that they'd done that. Um, and so I've always been able to do that, but this was the real first time that we've like those were all just, hey, draw it, do a picture, draw like an illustration of some sort, which is, I mean, technically is part of my job as well. But this was the first time that we've really gotten to show the full process and how this how that development leads into the game especially with, with Hadija there, who was able to answer a lot more questions than I was able to about the technical side of what happens to the card back once we actually have to put it into the game and the effect side of things. Um, and I think that was, I mean, it's really something that Blizzard does not do that often, if at all. There's, we've got a lot of Blizzard art books, um, and that sort of gives you an overview, overview after the fact, but a lot of that is like heavily curated and <laughs> a lot of that is like, hey, we didn't have a concept for that thing. Can you just draw one real quick? It's like, <laughs> it's not really representative of how the, um, the game gets put together. So it was really, really fun to be able to show off like a little bit more naturally how these things get built. That's that's really cool. It, it, so, would you say it was a pretty accurate representation of like what it's like doing card backs specifically? Because I'm I'm certain for just about any other piece of art, there's probably a lot of different moving parts before that. Oh, know, I'm sure, it, yeah, it gets finalized. This was, um, one of the things that made it easy was the card backs are pretty self-contained, especially for a seasonal one where it's just you just come up with a piece of art and then a 3D artist takes it and puts it onto a card back and we put it in the game. Like it, it doesn't have a lot of other interdependencies, especially when you don't have a theme that you're necessarily having to stick to. It was a really good example of something, yeah, self-contained that we could just do in one session. Honestly, it actually came together a lot more quickly than uh, I feel like there's something, and I found this at, this one I've streamed personally too. There's something really like there's like something that makes you more productive while you're working and people are watching. I find it's just like I have to sit down and paint. Like, this is going to happen. I need to get a result by the end of the stream. Occasionally, it'll, it won't work out, but I can't get distracted. I can't go and look at Reddit or check my phone or get distracted by turning around to the person behind me. And it's just, all right, I have to paint. So honestly, it came together. I mean, I like to say, oh, yeah, I knew it was going to be great, but it came together better than I was hoping it could. Also, I will, um, I will add that the, where it ended up on the Thursday at the end of the stream is definitely not final. And there's... Try to estimate. There's probably at least two more like proper work days of work left to get it get it done. It's funny because at the end of the Wednesday stream, I'm like, yes, this is this is almost done. I didn't even know if there's going to be anything to do on Thursday for the final stream. And then we came to Thursday, and it's just like all those final little touches. Um, it was a, that's definitely one of the things that you almost never see like in a live demo because you, certainly at BlizzCon it would be an hour or, or an hour and a half for some of the earlier panels would be. Here, do an illustration and the what it takes to go from zero to 
probably like 60 or 70 percent of an illustration you can do in an hour and a half as long as you're not super constrained or it, it works out okay and then it's that like those final touches so even have being able to show off that um is something that you almost never see like that an artist taking the time to just finish those little pieces and talk about that a little bit that was really nice to be able to show as well yeah it, it's fascinating and, and it's like you know what i what oh. i saw of the stream was to me felt like a, a really accurate representation of like of the the creative process, but also just painting. Like you said, that that last kind of 30% takes usually longer than the first, you know, 70% that came before it of, of fine tuning and getting it to a finalized place. So I was, I, I, you're, you're right. It was really cool to kind of see that on display. We only have so much time here. I'm kind of curious too, like, you know, as we've talked about all of the different properties that you've worked on, you know, Blizzard kind of from the outside looking in, it feels like the type of place that where as an artist, you're, it, you, you might never get bored. Like, so what, would you, do you, are you able to scratch all of your creative itches or is there like, or, or do you just still have like a deep burning desire to go do something completely different? I don't know. Maybe you want to go hide in a corner and just do some still lives for a change. <laughs> there's definitely, there's definitely an element of that. I mean, there's always, always something that you're not going to be able to, to get to. It definitely it takes most of my, like, yes, this is definitely what I want to be working on. Like, it's all fun. I really enjoy all of it. Um, these days, I don't have as much time for personal. I like. I used to do keeps for personal art, as you can see from my DeviantArt, which hasn't been updated in a couple of years at this point. Um, but the sort of thing I like to do in my own spare time, I do a lot of natural history stuff. Like I like drawing birds and animals and things. I like when I've got time for it. I like to do traditional painting. It's maybe once a year, I'll find time to break up the paints. I've got two young daughters now, so finding time for that sort of art is a lot more challenging, but what's um, your, uh, what's your uh, traditional medium of choice? It's mostly when I've been doing painting, it's acrylics. I like drawing. I mean, I, I do try and draw in a sketchbook with just a pencil a lot. Like I still even working. And I talked about this a little bit on the stream. What, even at work, I have a big stack of paper next to my desk on a clipboard. The clipboard that I got, I think on my first day, it's the same one. It's got a bunch of stickers on it and it's just got a, a stack of printer paper on it. And I just do like doodles. And I, 50% is just doodles for the fun of it while I'm waiting for a meeting or trying to find something in my head, thinking about an idea. And 50% is actual sketches, like thumbnail sketches or composition sketches just for, for things. It's, it still feels really nice to work like that traditionally. And so I've got a sketchbook that I try and take if I go traveling. Like I'll do Inktober every year. I try and do at least like some of it. Um, usually I get, I slack off about halfway through. But it's always a fun time just having that little impetus of, hey, do some ink drawings and pull out like a big set of markers that I've got. A lot of the time it'll be like, oh, I've got to do a birthday card or like a card for my wife for some, okay, like an anniversary. So I'll get the markers out and do something for that. So a lot of the time it's, um, yeah, I need a little, a little extra reason um, and I'll do a little bit of extra painting. But yeah, for the most part, like the variety that I get, um, from working on Blizzard, especially like Hearthstone, so many different things to be working on between card art to the UI to all these other like elements that I didn't really think about when I was just working on just the card art from outside the team. There's a lot. Do you know offhand how many card backs you've designed? Card backs? One. So the one I did. Oh, that was your first one. <laughs> oh, awesome. Yeah, that was my first one. I've done almost everything else in the game at this point now, but that was the first card back. So I've done a bunch of card packs so far as well, which have been fun. But yeah, the majority of my hostile work has been card art and key art for that. So it's been, I'm looking forward to doing more. It's definitely, there's something really fun about taking a theme and wrapping it into that constrained like shape that you have for a card back. Like they all, they all have certain elements that you need to keep, keep there and how you take those and fit a theme around them is really satisfying. So, so how long do you think you're going to just keep the fairy dragon card back as your main card back in Hearthstone? Like a year, yeah. two years? <laughs> yeah, probably. I mean, looking at the one that I've got now, I think it was the Nax Ramus heroic card back that I got when I beat that and I put it on. I'm not, not changing that another couple of years, I'm sure. But I have to make sure I get on and actually, that would, that would be really disappointing if I don't end up playing any and just miss out. 
Rad. Well, before before we go, uh, I, I'm curious. Uh, and it's it's been a long time since I've gotten to talk to a Blizzard artist, and we always get this question uh, when it happens. So I'm curious um, for any of the the budding, hopeful future Blizzard artists. What any advice? Just draw a lot, like, and draw what you're excited about. I think that was really what what took me over the like what made the big difference. I think was finding the Zerg at the time was just I wanted to draw all of them. Like I sat down and like, this is just amazing. And that was that, like I've seen, there are artists I've seen where it was like, oh, this is one amazing piece. And then you sort of don't hear from them. And I mean, it's not, I'm not saying you need to be like, every day, pump out a piece. But like, if you can find something that you're excited about, it really makes a difference to, and it really makes a difference to how easy it is to put in the work. Because a lot of the time, I mean, especially when you're doing it professionally, you've got days when you don't really feel like painting. And it's like, oh, I really just have to dredge this up dredge up the energy and just get it done. But if you're working on something that you know you're passionate about, it really like makes it easier to do that. Um, but yeah, I think consistency is the key. Like keep doing it, keep working on it. And even if you're not, I find that even if you're not specifically trying to like do studies of things or whatever, just doing more art, will you will just get better. Thanks for sharing that. And uh, thank you for your time. I really appreciate it, Luke. So for anyone out there that wants to take a look at your work or keep up with you, uh, what's the best place to uh, to keep an eye on what you're doing over there at Blizzard? Twitter and Instagram. I keep the best updated out of all my places. So I'm Mr. Jack Art uh, on both of those. And yeah, so I, I try and keep those up, updated moderately frequently. Um, and I've got a DeviantArt page, Vienna Art Station page, but they're not updated at all. <laughs> <laughs> I was taking a look at those as well. Well, uh, you should still go look at it, everybody. The work is great. So uh, thank you again, Luke. I really appreciate it. No worries. Thanks. It's been great to talk to you.